What do we have at the foundation of the reading? Lovers. Gemini energy at the foundation of the reading. Right now, I feel that a lot of you are going through some storms. I feel that there's a lot of obstacles that have been placed on your path that you're having a hard time making sense out of. There's this energy that is making a lot of you feel like you're not supported or you've been taking some missteps on your path. But there is a very good explanation for all of this. First of all, we have a whole bunch of retrogrades, which is why a lot of us are feeling this unsupportive kind of energy right now from the universe, like we're being almost reprimanded. We're second guessing a lot of our moves. And when we do find ourselves moving more deliberately, there seems to be something in our way. But after sitting with this energy for the past few days and meditating on it, I started to receive all these downloads regarding a new level that a lot of you are getting ready to transition into. And this energy right now can be likened to kind of growing pains, right? You see, when we're on our path, living inside this three-dimensional density and making our way through our everyday waking life, we come across a lot of distractions, a lot of obstacles, and a lot of projections that most of the time we're not even aware of. It's just life really happening. A lot of these things have a way of compounding together to misalign us with our path. Put simply, they have a way of unbalancing us. And again, it can go unnoticed. But because of what is taking place, astrologically speaking right now, there seems to be a more pronounced energy that's coming through that is really making us reevaluate some things, improve the way we're doing things, clean up a lot of areas of our life that need to have a little bit of attention before we hit this next plateau, so to speak. This lovers at the foundation is an energy of alignment. It's an energy of calibration. So having said all of that, what I'm feeling is taking place right now inside the collective is a great calibration. Those of you that have been on your path and putting the work and effort into bettering your circumstances, moving towards projects, increasing the overall value of your life, so to speak, well, you're going to feel this right now. You see, you have dedicated yourself to the path, which means that the universe is going to put you through some of these very uncomfortable, sometimes very painful, transformative processes. It's all a part of it. Again, the growing pains. So the message that all of you need to remember during this time that we're all going through is that you need to go through a storm to get to the next level. And I also need you to understand that, like I said, we are on this path with the divine. And when life happens, we have a way of stepping off that path without even really knowing it. So then the universe comes through and has to realign you with your path. In order to do this, it can be very uncomfortable. And this is the simplest explanation that I can give all of you for this energy that a lot of you may be feeling right now. What do we have at the sacral? Page of Pentacles at the sacral. I did a pre-spread before I hit record and I had the page of pentacles come out in that spread as well. And it really follows everything I just said perfectly because it speaks about some sort of new beginning that all of you are making your way towards right now. I just heard success and failure, which I feel really has a way of framing this energy that we're feeling right now. Yes, we are moving forward. There's this energy of success that is on the horizon line. We can feel it. You can see it. But in order to get there, there's things that are being stripped away. Huh, things are being sacrificed. And for a lot of you, this was not a part of the plan. It was unexpected. But that's just it. The path to that success to any success really is very rarely a smooth one when you are working in concert with the universe because the universe does things the correct way. The universe does things in a way that is in alignment with your highest good. When the universe brings you through success, it sticks. It stays. It doesn't go anywhere. Now we can go another layer deeper here and think about the universe spirit, God, as essentially a force that is all working together for your highest good. And then we can think about the opposing force, which can very much be likened to one selling their soul and doing things incorrectly, which is something I always speak about. We see this every day in the world around us, right? 
people selling themselves out, selling out all the people around them to get some sort of success and fame or whatever it may be in a shorter period of time than had they done it the correct way, which is in alignment with universal law and your highest good. What you all are going towards is a forever fortune. And that's something I've never said before, but it makes perfect sense because that's what the universe gives you. There's no strings attached. And the only things that you have to sacrifice in order to get it are all of the things that are not a vibrational match to you any longer. The Page of Pentacles is an energy of seeking abundance, right? So I have two cards on the table and I've already channeled through a plethora of messages and guidance here. But what we can see very clearly is the universe is preparing you, calibrating you, aligning you with whatever this manifestation is that you've been trying to bring into your everyday waking reality. What do we have the solar plexus, please? <sighs> wow. Two of swords, Libra energy at the solar plexus follows everything I just said perfectly because right here we can see an individual that's blindfolded trying to decide between one path or the other. The Two of Swords is an energy that suggests that some sort of decision needs to be made here. But it can also be an energy that can feel very confusing. There could be Things happening around you that are kind of chaotic, things falling apart, and you don't understand why. Where is this coming from? But again, in order to hit that next level in the game, some cycles need to be closed out. Some things need to be addressed. Some things need to be reevaluated. The universe is requiring you to let go of some sort of behavioral patternings and conditioning that is not going to serve you moving forward. Again, something or some things must be sacrificed. And it's typically always going to come down to the way we are moving, which can also be directly connected to things in our environment, people, places, things. On a gut level, I would like to think that most people know what these things are. They can be staring you right in the face. They can be right underneath your nose. You could be making up excuses for these things. We typically are. It's not until we get to the other side and look back do we really start to have perspective over the kind of stronghold that some of these things had over us. But that's what you want, right? You want to get to the next level in the game and look back and say, wow, I never even saw it like that. That thing, that person, whatever it is, I made up excuses for it. I programmed into my mind that releasing that thing, that person, wouldn't make a difference. But now, standing right where I am on this new timeline, it was literally the deciding factor. And I just heard very clearly for a lot of you, this is obviously going to be a person or people. It could be a community of people that you need to get away from in order to bring this manifestation to full realization. For a lot of you, there's going to be something vibrationally going on there. You know, manifestation all has to do with your vibration. You need to become a vibrational match or a vibrational asset to that which you are trying to materialize into your life, right? I quite often try to think about the things I'm manifesting into my life, like it's a ball of energy that is trying to decide where to go. So I do everything I possibly can within my power to become the absolute best host for that ball of energy. That ball of energy would feel at home with me. Now, if you can utilize this manifestation tool, I think you'll find that you'll start to see some sort of movement. Because although this sounds very simple, this requires you to break down with a fine tooth comb several sectors of your life. It requires you to do some auditing in your own waking life to make sure that there's nothing there that may be stopping your vibration from reaching the correct frequency to pull through said manifestation. Now, for some people, that may sound a little bit complex, and that's okay. But just to simplify all of that, the statement about what I said in regards to making yourself the best possible host for that manifestation should be enough to get the wheels turning. You'll be very surprised. You'll be shocked even once you program your mind to manifest from this place what the universe starts to highlight to you in your life that needs to go. And this is a part of this elevation that can obviously become very painful and uncomfortable. But you don't have to do anything. 
you can stay where you are, but you have to understand that in order to access these particular manifestations, this next level in the game, things have to go. By nature, humans carry way more than they need. By nature, humans make things more difficult than they need to be. It's not really our fault. It's just the way our realities have been constructed around us, which can lead you down a very deep rabbit hole as to why that is. If you've been listening to my readings for any extended period of time, and a lot of you already know what a lot of that may be, right? It's that force that is constantly pulling on our energy to stop us from becoming the absolute best versions of ourselves we can possibly be. You're also probably very aware that life is an energetic war at all times. From the moment of inception, we are engaged in an energetic war of balance. What do we have at the heart, please? Wow. Unbelievable. Energetic war of balance. And what do I get? The temperance in reverse at the heart. Now, the temperance upright is an energy of balance. And obviously, in reverse, it's an energy of imbalance. It also speaks about disruptive energies that are lingering around in your auric field, trying to stop you from calibrating your vibration with the next level in the game, the next timeline. These energies can create a lot of chaos, and I feel that right now, they're really going in. I'm also hearing something about individuals you may be dealing with not even really knowing you know, why they're doing the things they do. They just feel like they need to stop you or create some sort of problems or chaos in your life. Now, all I can tell you is if you have people around you like this, you need to get away from them as quickly as possible. Because my belief is that individuals like this have made themselves a host for some sort of dark force that has taken up residency inside of them to control them and guide them to stop you at all costs. Now, some of you may be saying to yourself, oh, that sounds kind of far-fetched. I don't, I don't have anything that's so important. I'm not that significant. I'm just a person. What do I have to offer that would make some dark force come after me and try and stop me from moving forward? Huh. Exactly. And if you've just said that to yourself, then you, my friends, are a bigger threat than you even know. See, when it comes to energy, when it comes to vibration, when it comes to this energetic war that we're all engaged in, for the most part, unknowingly, right? We can't really see it. It's just something that is taking place in spirit. But when you start to measure things from an energetic perspective, right? You strip away the material nature of things. You strip away the kind of illusion, the kind of matrix that we all live in, right? That hides the truth. Then you can start to see much clearer just how important and significant your path is. I believe that everybody is here for a reason. You know, as humans, we measure things in terms of fame and success and worldwide recognition and all these things. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of you, that's your path. Some of you, that's not your path. But the path that has been assigned to you is just as important, if not more important, than to those paths that are more obvious in nature. Because we are measuring things in terms of energy. You could go out into the world perfectly aligned with your path, have a very basic 9 to 5 job. Nothing really that significant, right? You could be living paycheck to paycheck. But when you start to think in terms of being a part of the mechanics of the universe and the universe putting you in certain spaces to create little domino effects, you couldn't possibly begin to imagine just how important of a role you play in the grand scheme of things. You could go out tomorrow have a conversation with one person that changes their entire life. Maybe this person has some sort of power or pull or influence. They take that piece of information you gave them and create a massive domino effect, a ripple effect rather, and so on and so on. And I try to make this as clear as possible during my readings that we have to think in terms of energy. We have to think in terms of just making ourselves an available vessel to higher source energy the divine, the universe, to God, whoever your supreme being may be that is alignment with the higher order. And that's all that really matters. And what I have personally found is that 
once you start to understand how this works and you make yourself that willing vessel to source, then you can start implementing your dreams, your true heart's desires, your passions, and you'll find that you'll have a lot more support. You know, your purpose, your destiny, your passions, your creative ventures, they don't all have to be the same thing. They can all be different facets of your destined path. But the whole point here is to just get into alignment, get on that path, go through the transformative process that the universe would like you to go through and watch as you begin to feel more supported and more successful than in any other time in your life. You feel seen. You start to get movement in areas of your life where you might not have gotten them in the past simply because you have heeded the call. And I truly, truly believe that all of us are capable of doing this. Now, like I said, life has a way of misaligning us, right? So we get off path just by living our everyday waking lives inside this reality. So there's some work that we have to go through to get realigned. And depending on your own set of circumstances and where you may be at in your life, this could take time, could be a difficult process. But if I can try and simplify again everything I'm saying here down into something that's kind of easy to manage, right? Something that you can visualize. It's like the universe drops us into the three-dimensional density. We're born, we're incarnated into this life cycle. We're making our way through our life, growing up, getting older. We become adults, and then we realize that the way that we are raised, the way that we have been living our life, is actually not in alignment with what the divine had willed for our life. And this is what is going to lead to some sort of inner calling. You feel, well, you feel kind of unsatisfied. You feel like there's something more. You feel like you're here to do something with meaning, with purpose, thus triggering a spiritual awakening. You go through the spiritual awakening process, which can be very layered. It can take years sometimes to get past that first awakening and make your way back to your path. But it's all dependent on how you've been living your life up until that point. Some have wandered so far off that path that it's obviously going to take more work than others. But one thing I can tell you for certain, and I can promise this to you, is that once you make your way back to your path, you're going to look back and you're going to see that every single step that you took to get realigned with your destined path had meaning behind it. This is when you start to put meaning behind some of the horrendous struggle that you've been through. You're so grateful for where you are and the life you're living as that new awakened version of yourself, that new aligned version of yourself, that you look back and you realize that everything had to unfold exactly the way it did to get you to where you are. Nothing could have been any different. And for some of you, that's a very painful thing to accept because of what a lot of you have been through. I remember when I was going through this process and I just couldn't make sense out of a lot of the things that I had to come up against in my life. But now I look back and I see it very clearly. It makes perfect sense to me. And this is when there's that little thing called faith that starts to rattle around in the deep recesses of your mind. That faith and that understanding that you now have is an agreement that you have with Source that tells you that even though your road may be long and winding, when you reach your destination, you will see very clearly why it had to be that way. And this is when you position yourself to allow the universe to repay you, to show you why everything had to unfold the way it did, thus allowing kinds of miracles to now unfold in your life. So I'm here to tell all of you today, as we sit here only four cards into this reading, that no matter what kinds of storms you may be going through right now, keep the faith, trust that the universe is trying to remove you from any sort of situations or events that are simply not in alignment with your highest good. The universe is placing obstacles on your path to awaken ideas inside of you. All of it is by way of divine guidance. And when you do step onto your path like a kind of spiritual warrior and you've gone through your initial awakening process, it doesn't mean that you're never going to have struggles again in your life because you definitely will. It just means that you're much more equipped to deal with them now because you understand the mechanics of the way the universe and the divine is working in your life enough to hold on to your faith and know that this too shall pass. And interestingly enough, we have the Two of Swords again on the bottom of the deck, but this is much different. See, it's like you're getting ready to take the blindfold off, right? You've now decided. 
which direction you're going to go in. And see how she's wearing the yellow slippers there, right? Solar plexus energy. So your solar plexus is all connected to your confidence. It's connected to your own personal power. So this is you deciding, right? Understanding that certain things need to be sacrificed from your life. So you make your way down that path. You pull the blindfold off and you're ready to weather whatever storm may come your way because you know it's necessary to get you to the next level in the game. What do we have for the throw, please? Queen of Cups, Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy in reverse at the throat. I'm picking up some sort of codependent energies around all of you. Now, it's going to be different. For some of you, it's going to actually be people that are just codependent on your energy. For others of you, it's going to be codependencies that you may have within you that the divine is asking you to sacrifice now. I just heard something about some of you having trouble eating right now. You're just not able to stomach food or you don't feel like eating. This is also a major sign that there's transformations taking place in your life, energetically speaking. I'm hearing something about a fast. So uh, if some of you have been feeling called to do a fast, I'd highly recommend this. There's also some messages here surrounding a lot of you feeling very tired and drained, a very confused energy. You feel like you keep making some sort of mistake. The universe doesn't want you to be hard on yourself right now if you have been having some errors in judgment lately, okay? As long as your heart is in the right place, you don't have anything to worry about. In fact, I think that a lot of you are hitting some walls in certain areas of your life. Just be careful nurturing any sort of new connections right now. This can be a very confusing time to do this because of the astrology, because of all of the retrogrades. And this has been coming through in a lot of the readings lately as well. Just really stay away from the ones that are going to have a permanent effect on your life right now. All your energy needs to go into this transformation you're going through. And this is prime time for these dark energies, prime time for the devil, because there's a vulnerability there. And the devil knows exactly what you like. So you need to be very careful, again, who and what is coming into your life right now. If it's too good to be true, it most likely is. What do we have at the third eye? The sun, Leo energy at the third eye. Perfect. And I've been speaking about this manifestation, this thing that is on the horizon line, right? I feel that the sun is representing the manifestation, is representing this new timeline, is representing this success, whatever that is for you and however this looks for you. And throughout this reading, we've been speaking about vibration, calibration, frequency, and then we get the sun, which is the most high vibrational card in the entire tarot. And it's right there at the third eye, which is all connected to your vision. It's all connected to your intuitive guidance and your imagination. Your imagination is a direct highway that runs between you and source. It's a constant flow of energy, messages, intuitive guidance that you're tasked with sorting through clusters of information that bolster into your psyche to aid you on your path. Right now, you're being called to really focus on these visions, focus on your imagination. When an obstacle is placed on your path, when a storm rolls into your life, as difficult as it may be, try and force yourself to put on a smile and try and see the absolute best. Laugh at yourself. Take the lesson and move forward in strength. Now, I understand that that's not going to be possible in every single case, so it's circumstantial. But if you can reframe your mindset around your struggles right now and see them as kinds of attacks to take your focus away from this manifestation, then this should be able to assist you in overcoming these energies and pushing forward in power and strength. <laughs> in power and strength. And I just looked down and I literally have strength on the bottom of the deck, also Leo energy. The strength card is all about fortitude. It's an energy of confidence, passion. I just heard very clearly that God has got you, that sometimes things have to be ran all the way down to zero, all the way down to a seemingly hopeless point to be built 
back on a stronger, more stabilized foundation. Again, you must keep the faith. What do we have with the crown, please? Six of Wands, Leo Energy again. So the Sun, Leo Energy. I just saw the Strength card, Leo Energy. Now we have Six of Wands, Leo Energy. Wow, what a spread. We go through all that to end this first row with a victory, a personal triumph for a lot of you. A lot of you are about to pull off something that you've been trying to pull off for many, many years. It wasn't that you weren't capable of doing it. It was never you weren't talented enough or skilled enough, whatever it may be. Your approach just needed to be tweaked. Your coach wasn't the right one for you. And what I mean by that is you didn't have the divine co-creating this with you. You were either trying to do it on your own or you had negative influences around you dictating your moves in some capacity, but not anymore. Now we're seeing very clearly the reason for all of this. There is something that you guys are each working on that you're about to have success with. I would say it's on its way to you, but it's more you are on your way to it. Because it, whatever that is, is already a reality, is already underway on another timeline. You are aligning, calibrating to that timeline right now. Your conscious awareness is going to awaken one day in the not so distant future on that new timeline. You will wake up one day having gone through everything you have gone through to get to that very moment and think, wow, I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I pulled it off. You're going to look back on your path with tremendous gratitude because not only are you now succeeding and surrounded by this manifestation, but you've now also got one hell of a story to share with others who may be also going through the same struggle that you yourself have just overcome. And then I have Ten of Swords on the bottom of the deck. And this depiction of the Ten of Swords is a little different than the other decks because it's like there's this person here, right? And there's these individuals carrying them. And I feel like this person is representing the people that are going through the struggles that you have overcome yourself, right? It's like here you are carrying them. Like, I got you. I've been through this before. So see how the divine will make a healer out of all of us without us even realizing it, right? You know, being a healer sometimes comes with misconceptions, but... All it really means is you are the keeper of a certain piece of wisdom because you have overcome specific struggles in your life that you can now help other people overcome in their life. A healer doesn't need to be perfect. A healer certainly doesn't need to be the most high vibrational aligned person in the room. A healer doesn't need to be healed of everything in their life. They just need to be healed with enough to help other people heal from what it is they themselves have already healed from. That is what a healer is. What do we have at the foundation, please? Oh, that card really coasted out of the deck. Queen of Pentacles in its negative polarity at the foundation of the reading. Now, as you look back and you're starting to reflect on your path, you're starting to gain some perspective, you're starting to see what it was that you were actually involved with, who it was you were surrounded by. All of the things that you couldn't see when they were in your everyday waking life, right? You can't see the forest for the trees until you get an aerial perspective over what it is you are actually dealing with or dealt with. There's something going on with some of your personal relationships here. It's these relationships, whether they're actual friends, family members, people that you're dating, these people are keeping you on a lower timeline. So for those of you that are still doing the releasing, still having to do the sacrificing in order to align with this new timeline, which, look, I feel a lot of you are going through this right now. Whether it's big or small, I feel that just about everybody in some capacity is facing this. But whatever it is, you have to think of it in terms of a vibration right now. Everybody's got one. Okay, so maybe when you're engaging with these people, maybe when you're engaging with those behavioral patterns, whatever it is, think about how that might be incrementally affecting your particular vibration, which may be keeping you on this lower timeline and not able to access what it is the divine is trying to guide you toward. We all deal with this in some capacity, no matter how 
advanced you are in your path. It's just how life works. We always need to sacrifice to get to the next level in the game. So don't be hard on yourself. Just be honest with yourself and be a willing participant in the transformation of your life because the universe is here right now waiting on you to make this happen. And right on the bottom of the deck, I have two of pentacles and I read this in its negative polarity as well. So this is speaking about some sort of disorder that's around a lot of you that is keeping your vibration low. This particular two of pentacles from this deck talks about something that's scattering your energy out. Making you feel all over the place, just very disorganized. What do we have at the sacral, please? Too many cards. What do we have at the sacral? Huh. Barbetus, Ten of Pentacles, Virgo energy at the sacral. This follows everything I was saying here. Because whenever I get this card, to me it's like this kind of greasy salesman, right? That's just trying to, you know, trick you into buying what he's selling, right? Like he's got your best interest in mind. Like he's sticking his neck out for you, right? But this Ten of Pentacles speaks about loss. It also speaks about issues with your family and your community. It also suggests that there may be an influence around you that is affecting you financially. Uh, usually all of these things are going to work in tandem to keep you in a place where you're feeling very stuck, right? We live in a material world, so uh, finances are obviously incredibly important, especially this day and age. Though it's not everything, it sure can solve a lot of problems when you have it. Okay, and it can also try and hold you back from making decisions that are in alignment with your highest good. This is why a lot of the times when you hear about people who go through these really difficult awakenings, right, and they take that fool's journey, sometimes there's a complete breakdown of people's finances. The material possessions are stripped away from them. Stability is just completely rocked. It just really depends who you are and what the divine has written in your particular mission statement. But in saying all that, try your absolute best, depending on what you're dealing with, to not let things that are material in nature take precedent over what the divine has willed for your life. This can also speak about this painful process that I picked up on, right? the divine realigning you, getting you back on path, got to pull you out of hell so to speak, right? Imagine a representative of the divine coming into hell, right? Escorting you out. Obviously, that's going to be a rough journey to get you out of there. You're going to come across a whole bunch of demons that are trying to get in your way and stop you from escaping hell. It's probably going to be some evil witches that are chasing after you. It's probably going to be some people throwing different kinds of energy work at you. There's just no telling. But a lot of us just don't know how far we've wandered off path until we start this awakening process, right? You know, life inside this three-dimensional density, you could argue, is a certain kind of hell. I mean, life's hard. Seems like it just gets harder all the time. But it seems to me, based on my own experience, that the more you accept the truth, the more willing you are to go through these uncomfortable storms in your life, which can be just another way of speaking about a tower, right? If you know the tarot, then the easier it does become on the other side, okay? Because that empowerment positions you in a space where you have a certain kind of protection around you at all times. And on the bottom of the deck, I have the chariot. Now, this chariot I read, again, in its negative polarity, which is all about different kinds of delays, accidents even, right? Whether they're big or small, things that are trying to get you to give up, okay? I'm also hearing things here about some people in the collective quite possibly having travel issues, right? This is like, um, I don't know, maybe you're, you're on a road trip and you break down in the middle of nowhere, and then you've got to get your car towed and you're paying all these fees to get your car towed. Or if you have AAA, you're having to pay all the overage fees depending on which AAA membership you have. See, these are all the things that are taking place inside the collective right now. But no matter what it is, you've got to keep pushing forward because there's a breakthrough on the other side of all of this. And if you are dealing with things like this, it's because of the threatening nature of this manifestation that you're trying to pull through right now. What do we have the solar plexus? Oh. Wow. 
unbelievable. There it is. The Chariot, Andras, in its negative polarity. This is the card I just saw on the bottom of the deck, and I just spoke about it. And now it comes out of the deck. See, there's this energy here that wants you to think that you've made the wrong decision, that you've taken the wrong turn somewhere along the way. I just heard it's trying to lead you back to hell, right? There may be people being sent into your life right now that are trying to distract you or, uh, again, just stop you from moving forward anymore. It's like the devil is trying to slow light workers down right now. People that are being called to certain spaces. So to reiterate, whatever you are facing off with right now, no matter how big the obstacle may look, you must keep going. And if you find yourself in a space where you're checkmated, you don't know which way to move, you can't see a clear way through this obstacle or around this obstacle, so to speak, you need to call out to the divine, to God, ask for help. And if it's in alignment with your highest good and your mission, It'll come through. And on the bottom of the deck, I have the Six of Swords. So they just keep reiterating the message over and over again. Aquarius energy with the Six of Swords. Now, this Six of Swords speaks about an energy of feeling stuck or like you can't move on, like you've been checkmated. It's like you've hit a dead end, but it's not a dead end. It just looks that way. It's an illusion. What do we have at the heart, please? Wow. Andrelfis. Unhappy voyage. That is the Queen of Swords in its negative polarity. So there's some sort of imposter here or, um, well, this Queen of Swords from this deck, this is the pathological liar of the tarot. It's something that is presenting itself like something it is not. I'm hearing something about the block, right? It's like somebody saying, nope, there's a roadblock here. Sorry, you got to turn around and go back. But it's a lie or your perception or it's a lie that you're telling yourself. Like, I can't go any further. I just don't know what to do now. But the divine is calling on you to be strong. You're so close. I always speak about how there's this kind of increase in obstacles. It's like you hit what seems like a, a dip in your energy before you hit this next level in the game. And depending on what it is you're pulling through, you could hit a really big dip, a deep dip, right? Which is just trying to rip away any sort of drive, any sort of faith away from you. It's like an energy that's trying to completely pull the rug out from underneath you. And then we have the world, fountain of wisdom, Damabia. So Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius energy. There's a major cycle that you're going to complete with this. And I feel again for a lot of you, it has to do with some sort of project, something that's going to elevate you to the next level in the game. And there's so much emphasis on travel in this reading. Travel, travel. This one's trying to stop you from traveling, movement some sort of integration, whether it's energetically or physically. There's something happening here in regards to movement. And we saw that Six of Swords, too, on the bottom of the deck, which is also an energy of travel. It's very important that during these times right now, you're not surrounding yourself with people that you're unsure of or may not have your best interest in mind, okay? I mean, if possible... It's probably a good idea, depending on what your situation is, it's going to be different for everybody, but move in silence. Don't tell people what you're doing. And if you can, just try to roll solo right now until you pull this through. All your focus, all your energy needs to be on this, whatever this is representing for you. I just heard the divine is all hands on deck. What do we have at the throat, please? Wow, unbelievable. The full ve u ia the exalting God, will and new beginnings assist with difficult and great undertakings, literally followed what I just said. 
and the Fool is all about you stepping out on faith. And it's another card that represents travel. Travel, 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 the Six of Swords, travel. And if you are literally traveling, right, take precautionary measures to make sure that if anything goes wrong, you have backups or you have a way out of your situation, okay? What do we have, the third eye, please? Again, the world. The world, the world, the exact same card, but from a different deck. God, the source of wisdom, fountain of wisdom, gives success in all ventures, okay? So confirmation after confirmation here. For any of you that are going through this, for any of you where this resonates, this is a perfect blueprint that you should be able to use to navigate this terrain, right? To pull this through for yourself. The sun stacked with the world at the third eye is speaking about what I said in regards to your influence, whether it's seemingly big or small, having a global effect, whether you know this or not, which puts a certain amount of importance behind the universe, making sure you're where you need to be when they need you there, making sure that you make it to this destination, making sure that you pull through this manifestation. And this also speaks about this vision, right? that you have, this true heart's desire, this intuitive guidance, you know this is the path you're supposed to take. Success and accomplishment. What do we have the crown to close out the reading, please? The moon. Pisces energy. Gabriel, at the crown to close out the reading. God is my strength. Divine revelation reveals messages, has the power to destroy. Pay attention to your dreams right now. Pay attention to the downloads you're receiving, the clusters of information that I spoke about earlier on in the reading. Pay attention to the fear that might be trying to creep in right now. Again, if any obstacles are placed on your path and you think that there's no way around or somebody tells you that there's no way around, understand that that is an illusion. You just need to take some time out, speak to source, speak to God, and ask how you overcome the great obstacle that has been placed on your path. And be prepared. Right now, we are weathering energetic storms. But if you are prepared the best you can, you will save yourself a lot of pain and heartache, okay? But as long as your connection with the divine is clear and you're nurturing that space, you should be able to overcome whatever is placed on your path because your connection is so strong and powerful that you'll have a better idea of what may be coming your way and the information that you need to overcome it. This is the message I have available to all of you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donations. Take care.